Welcome back. We are here with our good friend, Dr. John Townsend. Um, this is so important. Such a great podcast. I mean, we're going deep yeah. into the social circle because you become like the people you hang out with. It's something I have just said for so long. People are contagious. They're sort of like the flu right. <laughs> in, <laughs> in a, a bad way, but in a, in a good way, they can just make you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Townsend is a coach. He's a trainer. He's a psychologist. Uh, we're so happy. He's an overall amazing him. human being. And, uh, you had a question. I do. So we talked about how to build up your, which is so important, build up the, the positive people in your life. Now we really need to talk about how to minimize, probably never going to eliminate them, nor would you necessarily well, want to. I, we talked about a cleanse. A clen cleansing. <laughs> the negative people that are draining you. If you're not like me, who just is like, bye, and is able to block people and not feel that bad about it. If you're one of those people who has a really hard time with it, what yep. do you do? Well, number one, there are some people that if they had the right approach, they could change. You know, I don't, I don't want to leave a person if they bug me, if I haven't talked to them about it. There are some people that there's mild, moderate, severe. Now, moderate, severe, you got to be like Tana. Bye. But a right, mild the person toxic goes, ones. Yeah, but a mild person might go, you know, sorry, I didn't know that. And here's yeah. the way you do it. You tell them no. Because no, well, either they'll say, well, that's hard. You know, I, you won't meet me as much as I said or whatever, or how much I need. And you go, no, I can't. But they'll go, oh, I'll adapt to that. But really crazy people will leave you. Mm -hmm. They, they self-select because when you tell them no, they can't get what they want. They can't get your time. They can't get your love. They can't get your money. They can't get your energy. What do they do? When you say, no, I can't do that. That's not okay. They go find another target. Right. So part is just starts frustrating them and telling them that you basically here's the mantra guys you change a controlling person to a frustrated person mm. yeah that's interesting that's so um so one example of a toxic situation where this is where i blocked someone's number um yep. i did that said i can't help you with that here's what i can help you with it wasn't what that person wanted but would have actually helped them probably more in the long run and they blew up and tried to split and do all kinds of things and toxic things in the family. That's okay. when I blocked them. That's a toxic person. So okay. that's one strategy that I, that I've learned with boundaries is give them, give them another option besides what the money that they're asking for or the, whatever it is they're asking for that you just can't give them, give them an option that's actually going to help them long-term a valuable, you know, your time or something that you can give them or advice or whatever it is. Um, or, and, or, or give them another person and say, right. you know, I don't, for this, but you know, this organization or whatever might help you. Right. If like they go them. away and they're not interested, then that's one thing. If they that's become fine. toxic, then that's a whole different story. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. So let's talk about setbacks and resilience. And um, all of us have them. I have a phrase that I've grown to love uh, be curious not furious. Mm -hmm. So really try to understand what happened and then learn from it because everybody has setbacks. But in People Fuel, you talk about that. Uh, say more about setbacks, resilience. Well, it's like you said, Daniel, you can expect those. Uh, that we've got to get the idea out of our heads that this is going to be a smooth track. And most people kind of get that, that there's no, there, there's nobody that's been successful without hurts or failures or whatever. And so in our world, the world of, of psychology and psychiatry, we, we call it normalizing. You have to normalize the fact that life's going to be that way, which means adaptation. Really, really, you know, smart, successful people are always adapting and going, what I learned from that, let me get my team around, let me process it. You know, the, the money thing went south and I had a great idea, but we lost a lot of money. Okay, what did we learn from it? Mm -hmm. Or my relationship really, really went upside down. And the, mess, the best thing you can do, the number one thing you can do is first ask yourself this question. What did I contribute? Mm -hmm. Before we go into this lane, you know, I'm around crazy people and blah, 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 the economy's bad, global warming. Number one thing is, what did I can contribute? I was working with um, some high level couples recently. I was doing a retreat with their relationships and they want to be better, but very, very successful people. And um, I said, Look, let's talk about you guys. And one thing my requirement was with them when they start talking about their marriages, before you tell me how bad she, how crazy she makes you or how crazy he makes you, what's your contribution? 
And they kind of had to struggle with it at Bio Like, well, I'm much more in touch with how that person makes me crazy. I said, no, no, you know you are. But start thinking, are you sometimes, do you stonewall sometimes? Do you shut down sometimes? Do you blame sometimes? Do you get controlling or rigid? Or do you act like a victim? And then it became a very good retreat. So number one, take the beam out of your eye. I love so that. So let me add to that a little bit because I do something very similar with my patients. Um, and it actually, I'm a child psychiatrist as well. It started with kids uh, because I get these terribly oppositional, defiant children and they'd be blaming, you know, everybody else. And I'm like, so how do you make your mother crazy? And they're like, <laughs> I don't. And I'm like, no, you do. Think about it with me. And they become very creative and insightful. And so I then started using that with couples. I'm like, so what is it that you do that makes them upset? And, you know, they'll go nothing, but then they'll think about it. Because if you know what you do that makes them upset, well, odds are you also know what you do that makes them smile and what you do that makes them. So it's centering them in their power place. Because yes. I know today I could get Tana to start screaming <laughs> at me if I told her to shut up, sit down, and you just need to stop and listen to me. And she just <laughs> starts screaming. I'd start laughing. But, uh, but I, I, had to but I choose not to do <laughs> that. No universe I know about is that going to ever happen. <laughs> I would just think he hit his head. But anyways. But no, I choose I not to do the things I know and that puts me in a powerful yes. place. See, the thing I was, you just said it. What I, what I love about what you do with that and what you're talking about, John, you both said the, my favorite word, responsibility, but you frame it in a way of power. So when yeah. they do that, when they take responsibility, they are more powerful and you're, they're not a victim. And that's just so important. So I love yeah. you both have that in your work, that, that yeah. responsibility portion. Yeah, there's another cool idea. I've been studying this a lot. You guys are probably familiar with it too, that there's a step beyond resilience now. And it's called Anti-Fragile. A very good book was written by a guy who wrote, who wrote about culture and psychology called Anti-Fragile. And his thesis is like the bones, when you break a bone, when you mend it and do all the right things, it comes back stronger than it did. His point is if we treat everybody in our life like uh, broken bird shells and and, you know, like I got to walk on eggshells around you. And there are fragile people there. And, and we've all treated them. They're, they're people that need to be, you know, going in residential treatment care or they need to be in a hospitalized because they're so fragile. You're very tender with them. But most people, if you can help them to not feel scared about negative things and not be scared of failure, they come back stronger than we were. Resilience means I come back at the same level. Anti-fragile means I come back at a higher level. So oh, with the stress of like the bone, like that. bone, and that's where we need to go when we have a setback. Yep. Yeah, there's another word for that I like called work hardening. So when someone goes off work because they have an injury, you don't just send them back to work when they're sort of okay. Is You need to strengthen them even beyond Don't you that. also call it post-traumatic growth? Post-traumatic growth is another great and that, term. Those are great concepts to give, uh, to give you guys the audience hope that – this isn't going to put my life back together. I might come back stronger. For yeah, this. you might be better. I might be better. And so before we end this podcast, what are a couple of practical things you tell people when they have a setback? Um, it just, it happens to all of us, either in our finances, our health, our marriages, uh, with our children. Of course, if you have teenagers, there's a setback. I have four. I have four. Four things I tell people. <clears throat> One is you cannot process of this alone. I mean, you and I, the three of us, are very relational people. You can't process the setback alone. It's just do it in your head. You got to have some safe people that you can say it really sucks now, and I'm really discouraged because if nobody's there to contain it, it's too much for your brain. So find those safe people and process it. Number two, deal with the judge in your head because we all tend to blame ourselves and beat ourselves up, and it was all me, and I'm a failure. I let everybody down. And Tana is laughing her head off. Right? <laughs> yeah. You should just wear your black robes. The judges. I think yeah. that would just be. <laughs> yeah. You should wear your black robes. Tana, do you, are you saying you know somebody who has a judge? Uh, not me. I don't know anybody like that. Okay. Anyway, it's a theory. 
So we all have that mean judge that says you're letting everybody down, you're a loser, and you'll always be this way. You got to deal with that judge, and mm-hmm. so you got to be nice to me. So you get the support, you deal with the judge. Sometimes we need to grieve. We're finding yeah. out that the neurology of grief is a very helpful yeah. thing. Don't just get back on the horse and say, "Okay, I'm learning." You might say, "I'm sad. I lost a relationship. I, I'm sad about that, or I lost an opportunity in business, or something. My kids happened." It's healthy to grieve. There's all kinds of great research about grief, and the fourth one is adapt to the new normal. What did I learn so I can behave differently? If you do those four things, the setbacks are fine. I love that. I, I want to um, share before we end today, uh, one of my favorite stories of post-traumatic growth. And the reason I think it's so powerful is because it was from a teenager. Um, our niece, who we've been helping, who is 14, who went through a truly traumatic and tragic situation. Um, we helped get them out of foster care. My two nieces. We were, we were having dinner talking about that. Yeah, one it was really hard. Um, and so my 14 year old niece, who's now down here, she's an honor student going to an early college, you know, school, and um, she's amazing. She's this amazing kid. She's very resilient, and she. We've been trying to influence her. Now, this is an example of someone you want to influence, right? This is an example yeah. of someone you want to invest your energy into. Yep. She so looked, she's in the care category. We okay, she's care just an amazing human people. being who's trying really hard. She's absorbing it like a sponge. She's doing everything she can. Yeah, that's, that's worth the investment. Oh, absolutely. And she, the other day we picked her up from a dance. She got invited to a school dance and she um, she's in the back of the car. And after we dropped her friends off, she said, we, we said, I don't even know how it came up, but she, she looked at me and she said, I'm actually happy about my past now. She used to be so shamed by it. And I said, why? Why? That's a switch. She said, because I know I can go through anything now. She goes, it doesn't matter. I can tell people about it and it doesn't matter anymore because now I know I can handle anything. I was full. I got, it gives me chills because I was floored that a 14 year old could own herself and be. Yeah. Post, post-traumatic growth. Just and be so, so responsible she and I for her life. and you, we all talked about post-traumatic growth. No, uh, you just got choked up right then. And I got choked up too. Okay. We all three got a little choked up about your niece because all of us feel that all of us feel like there's got to be a chance to redeem these bad years and to come back a better person. And I want 40 year olds to be able to do what a 14 year old can do. Can do if it. a 14 year old can do it. You know, the only reason you were able to help her as much as you have is because you came to grips with the demons in your own past. Yeah, when I was in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but whatever the age, um, whatever the age, it, in order to be the reluctant healer, you have to deal with the demons in your past, which you've done head on. I'd be afraid of the demons if I was them. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we're going to come back but with one wait, more. Wait, wait. It's because of special people in my life. Since we're closing it on this note, it's because of, I have an amazing husband. I have amazing friends like John Townsend, his book Boundaries. I have amazing mentors in my life that I sought out. So you take responsibility, you seek these people out, and it will change your life. And responsibility is never your fault. No, it's not blame. It's your ability to respond. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics, or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.